All right, so if we're assuming that there's going to be a lot of planets out there and that we can figure out at least the good ones, the ones that we want to go to, not the Mars, how do we actually get there? Okay, <laughs> so uh, interstellar travel. Um, we have to escape the sun's gravity. Yep. Which is one problem. And so that's that delta V we've talked about before, right? Well, you've got to overcome the gravity because the sun's very heavy, so you've got to be fighting yep. against it to get out. Okay. And the distances are enormous. Yeah. So nearest star, Proxima Centauri, is about four light years away. Okay. Now, to give that a scale, that's a thousand times further away than Neptune. So it's 10,000 times further than Neptune. And how long does it take to get to Neptune right now? Well, I mean, let's imagine this is our okay. solar system. So yep. the sun's in the middle and Neptune's going around the outside of my hand. Okay, so where, where's Alpha Centauri? Alpha Centauri Here. will be a kilometre away. All right, that's, that's, that's far. The fastest space trip ever built by the human race, that we'll talk about in a minute, so it has currently reached about your belly button. That's a pretty far trip. So we've gone... It, it took 46 years to get there. So we've essentially gone nowhere. Yes. <laughs> for lack of a better phrase. Yeah. So we've always said, don't talk about the distance, talk about the yes. delta V. And this is kind of the exception to that. Okay. <laughs> but let's start off by talking about the delta V. So you can do what we've done for everything else and work yep. out the minimum energy path to get to interstellar space. So this means that you've had enough energy to leave the, the gravitational pull of essentially yep. the sun, right? And the way you do it is you'd launch from the Earth in the same direction as the Earth's motion. Yep. So you get the boost of the Earth's 30 kilometer a second motion around the sun. Yep. And then head out in a, a parabolic orbit. Okay. And turns out that to get to interstellar uh, space from the Earth's surface, you need about 18 kilometers per second. Well, that's not that bad. I mean, wasn't what was Mars like five, ten? I mean, low Earth orbit's five. So I mean, that's yeah, Earth that's orbit about nine. But, yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, that's, that's not that different. That's reasonable. But yeah, it's not not ridiculous. And indeed, it's been done. Yep. So the current fastest space probe is Voyager One. Um, it went into Earth orbit and then fired up to a speed relative to the Earth of about 20 kilometers per second. So enough to Yep. Leave the orbit. Of course, as it moves away from the sun, the gravity is pulling it back and slowing it down. Yep. So the orbit we talked about here previously, you might launch with 18 kilometers per second from here. But you slowly you'd be down it only you at very. But in this case, it was actually still going at 18 kilometers per second because it got a gravity assist. You remember we talked about yes. using the planets to speed you up. It got two gravity assists, one from Jupiter and one from Saturn. So it was time to go by Jupiter, get that boost to overcome it, get another boost again, by which time I guess it was far away enough and fast enough. Yeah. Or have enough energy that... Got so it's 18. actually still going at 18 kilometers per second. It's currently 160 astronomical units from the sun. So again, if this is our solar system, it's about on you somewhere. And Alpha Centauri is that way. <laughs> a kilometer away. Yeah, okay. Um, so yes, we've got interstellar travel. There's a whole bunch of probes going off in different directions from our solar system into interstellar space. Okay. The trouble is... <laughs> If it was aimed at Proxima Centauri, which it which is not, because yes. it, it was aimed to look at Jupiter and Saturn. That's right. Um, it would take about 80,000 years uh -huh. to get there. Just imagine it's taken 46 years to get to your stomach. 80,000 years to go another kilometer. So, so I guess this is the case of the energy and distance does kind of matter in this case, because the distances are just so enormous. Yeah, so the delta V will tell you the minimum energy route to get there, but the minimum energy route to take to get there is going to take hundreds of thousands yeah, exactly. of years. So you're going to have to burn a bit more energy if you want to get there faster. And as you said, it's not actually aimed anywhere near, I guess, at anything. Yeah. And in all these ones that are slowly escaping, that wasn't the point of the mission. The point of the mission was to go other places on the edge of our own solar system we didn't care about beyond. That's right. And in fact, even get, this relies on going in the same direction as the orbit of the planets. So if yeah. you want to go to a star somewhere else, you can't use the gravity assist, you can't use the Earth's motion. So we essentially, even if we wanted to redo what Voyager did and they said we didn't care about the 80,000 years, we'd have to start all over again because we need to calculate it to aim it at that star. So we're still 50 years from the start point anyway. Yeah. So we can work out what it would take to actually get somewhere in a reasonable amount of time, as okay. opposed to 80,000 years. I guess it depends on what reasonable is, but okay. Okay, well, let's say we wanted to get to Proxima Centauri <coughs> in only 1,000 years. I mean, that's better than 80,000, I it guess. It's better than 80,000. We'd need a delta V of 1,200 kilometers per second. Uh -huh, and we just, we only needed 18 to... Yeah. To do all that. Everything we've been talking about in this course is delta Vs of 5, 10, 15, 20. Now we're 1,200. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit more. But I mean, I mean again, 1,000 years is still not... To get there in 100 years. So if we want to have one human born on it somehow or seeing yes. it, 
it's 12,000 kilometers yeah. per second. Likewise, if you want to get there in 10 years, in lifespan, it's going to be 120,000. Okay, okay. so, so this is a lot, but... Uh... Practically, how much fuel do we actually need to do that? Well, we know how to do this. We've got the rocket yep. equation, right? So let's imagine we wanted to get there in a thousand years. All right, we'll be reasonable. Okay. Yes. So we can use the rocket equation. A very good chemical right. fueled rocket using, say, a hydrogen and oxygen might get a four and a half, four and a half kilometers per second. So to get there in a thousand years, the mass ratio delta v, e to the, v delta v of ve is e to the one thousand two hundred over four and a half, which is six by 10 to the 115. That's now, with 115 zeros after it. So that's a big number. Like how big is that? Uh, it's more than the mass of the observable universe. Okay, that's big. Every star and every galaxy in the entire observable universe. So if we harnessed everything that we know of mass wise, yeah. turn it into a good chemical rocket, it would still take a thousand years to get to Alpha We're not just talking about the Earth, or the Earth <laughs> and the Sun. So all the stars, all the galaxies, galaxies all the... Inter Most of which are millions of light years away, so we'd need interstellar travel to get them to bring the fuel back. Uh -huh. And that would still only add up to about 10 to the 50, so this is still... And it would still take us a thousand a years. A million, 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 more That's times right. more than that. It still takes a thousand years. So the answer is no? The answer is okay. no, 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 <laughs> no, no, I, no. I mean, okay. Yeah. And that's just transport one kilogram to the <laughs> percent, all right. All right, so not going to work. We're not going to do interstellar travel with rocket rocket motors. So we need something else. We definitely need something else. Okay. Um, so what can we do? All right. I mean, give up would be the obvious. Um, I don't want to give up, though. Okay, but so there are basically three possibilities. Yep. Possibility number one is we need to get the exhaust of our rocket much faster. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Not that... just 20% faster or even double the speed, but, but like 100 hundreds. times yeah, faster. Yeah, exactly. And that's going to rely on nuclear energy or maybe antimatter or something like that. It's going to be, no, no way you can do it with chemicals. chemicals. So we have to change the, the, the essentially the way the dry mass works to yeah. get the exhaust different. That's yep. right. Another possibility is maybe yep. you don't actually have any fuel on your spacecraft, but you push it with laser light from the Earth. And I guess the benefit there is you, you still have the requirements of getting into space, but we can solve that. We know that. Yeah. And you use some other way of then propelling it. So the energy, the fuel is not on the rocket, but it's back on, home. On the, and, and, and we can deal with that. Yeah. So that's another possibility. The third possibility magic. is just <laughs> magic warp drives, hyperspace but, yeah, wormholes. This because this is the sort of stuff that we hear about in science fiction. I guess the question is, how closer of reality or practical is it? And we're going to touch on this. And I think the fact I called it magic gives you some <laughs> idea of my impression here. Okay, so we'll talk about these in turn. All right.